Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, do 10,000. Yeah, well, do, you know, why not? Oh, do 400. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! What the name of God was that? That was, I, I, yeah. Sorry. And then, of course, now we're getting into fun stuff, right? You know, it's like 400. What if I make this one 600? Well, G, that's an interval. What, what interval is that? Twinkle, twinkle, that's a major fifth, right? You know, 600, let's go 700. And then we're going to do this with lasers later. There's an octave, right? There we go. All right. That's fun. Little applause. Except for the shark I liked how I hit that right when he was walking by it. He's like, ah. He'll never be able to hear the mosquito ringtone from that ear ever again. Such a shame, is it? So did we ever sing you a happy birthday? Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, in the back of the room, we got Spencer Bateman, and he just turned how old? A long time ago, but, but we won't mention that. Right? Have him stand up for us. Give him a big round of applause. <laughs> now to make his birthday something kind of <laughs> special, let's all join and sing him a happy birthday that special way we do here in physics. Ready? One, two, one, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Spencer. Oh! Happy birthday to you. Better make them, better make them. I B A P. And then if you have your summer birthdays written on that little piece of paper. Pass those forward or give them to me. And it will just become your birthday at some point, just randomly. Which is somewhat terrifying to think about it, right? Unless... Keenan's turning 16 this year. And we want him to do something for his 16th birthday, so... Probably not going to go to Sky High. Do it. But maybe. I think it would be fun to do like dodgeball there, right? It is. Although, do people just run around or do they have to bounce? What are the rules? Huh? Do they have to bounce? No. All right. So here's how you solve these things, right? The first thing is, um, in these problems, if, they, if you have enough, if you have to calculate the wavelength, you need the wavelength somehow. Right? Now, sometimes you can figure out what the wavelength is and then figure out the frequency from that, right? But step one is you, you know, you're going to use this formula, V is F lambda, probably to figure out the wavelength, right? Um, and then find the difference in distance. So if I've got a source that's here and a source that's there, right? And there's some distance here and there's some distance there. This is length one and that's length two. The difference in distance is, you know, length two minus length one. We just want absolute values. We don't care about negative numbers, right? Okay. And then you, what you want to do is figure out how many wavelengths that is, right? So that's like a divided by, right? So you're going to divide this by the wavelength. And that's going to give you the number of wavelengths. All right? And then look at it if it's, you know, if it's 0, 1, 2, 3. That gives you n, right? Doesn't it? Right? So if it's 0, 1, 2, 3, then that's constructive. Right, if it's 0.5, 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, and that's destructive, right? And then if it's like 0.25, you know, it's like, I don't know what that is, kind of a little bit of both, right? I don't know, is that kind of, I'm just kind of be vague, mutter, say a few things, right? Oh, I don't know, wavelength, I don't know, I don't know, you know, but if it's, if it's like 0.45, right, something 0.45, you know, 
something 0.45, well, that's mostly destructive, right? And if it's something 0 0.01, right? Well, then that's, you know, I don't know. You can just a little judgment there. Let me do that kind of thing. Is there so here is um, in air where the speed of sound is 350 meters per second. It's normally 343, but if you heat it up, it might be that fast, right? Two loudspeakers produce a frequency of 700 hertz. This makes the wavelength conveniently what? Well, 350 meters of, of space divided into 700 equal parts. The wavelengths each are? Two. One half. One half? Is it one half? I don't know. Two or one half. I believe it's one half, though, right? Because there's so many equal parts and just not that many of those things, right? Okay. But let's use the formula here. So the speed is 350. That is the frequency. That's meters per second, right? And then each second is divided into 700 equal parts, 700 cycles per second. So the wavelength is 0.5, right? Okay, so that's step one, we did that, right? And then if we are 3.21 meters from the left speaker and 1.22 from the right speaker, so the picture is exactly the opposite of this, right? Okay, we're close to this guy, 1.22 and 3.21. Huh. I'm having a hard time writing numbers, right? Then let's figure out, um, First off, the difference in distance is just 3.21 minus 1.22. This is 1.99 meters, right? And then how many wavelengths is that? How many 0.5s is that? 1.99 meters divided by 0.5 is, what is that, is that four? Yeah, it's close. It's 3.98. So which one is it? Is it constructive or destructive? It's mostly constructive, right? Nearly perfect, nearly perfect constructive. So at a, at a given time, if you knew the frequency, and, and by the way, you're in an anechoic room, right? We're not dealing with reflections off the walls. I mean, who knows what that would be, right? They've got computer software, by the way, that can mimic uh, uh, um, uh, acoustic spaces, right? You know, imagine all those reflections and then those are not total reflections and all this stuff, right? But, but without that, right, we knew the frequency of the speakers and then you took a string to the center of each speaker, right? And speakers have some extent, so where the wave is really being created, you know, that's a little bit dodgy, right? But if you somehow measure that distance, subtract, divide by the wavelength, you get the number of wavelengths and sure enough, that's nearly perfect constructive interference. It would be loud, yeah? Or if it was light waves, it would be bright. Or if it was earthquake waves, it would be bad news, right? That's right. Is it loud or soft? Do we answer it? So it's loud. Yeah, we got it right. Look at us. I put that in there because I think some kids missed the class and want to do it. Let's have you guys try this on whiteboards. Wake up your neighbor. If your neighbor is sleeping, if they're drooling, give them a paper towel. Should turn off the laser, it's a busily lazing. <laughs> oh, you reminded me of a happy thing we can do. Oh, no, no, not too painful. Hey, did you figure that out? Oh, to do that, yeah, okay. I made a mistake in the um, gravity and circular motion. I don't know if you figured it out. You probably did. Remember how they like book problems on there or something like that? Oh, no, no. Gravity and circular motion starts with negative three or something, doesn't it? And I thought it only had 12. Okay, so let's see. Let's go. Uh, there it is. Gravity. Most of them are there. Some of them are in a previous period. Then you can just save and it out.
No, no, we're fine. I'm not going to go back and change all the assignments or something like that.